Hello. For those of you who are around the equator line and it's or oh, it's morning time, good morning. For those of you who are in the afternoon, good afternoon. For those who are evening or night, good night. Thanks for being present. Some of you I remember the name. Like Nota Sue. And I think Alba as well. Ah, welcome to Orson. Welcome, Dima, if I'm saying your name right. My name is Kelly Tavares, tour guide here in Rio de Janeiro, and I'd like to know where are you speaking from? Hey, <laughs> good. <laughs> Thanks for making that up and being here. Thank you so much. I'm, um, I have on my background a nice um, pattern that I'm going to I'm going to speak about it soon. Hey Luigi, ciao. Dove sei? Da Milano? Or are you living in uh, in the US? Today here is a beautiful day. There are few just a few clouds. I'm in the city center and Behind me, that was just like the VOT passing by in front of the historic church of Santa Rita. Ah, you're living in London. Okay. I will be uh, turning around a little bit so you can see a little bit of the surroundings as well while I speak. And we are celebrating uh, Black history. And I am celebrating Black history every day in my life. As part of my work as a tour guide, I'm a qualified tour guide here in Rio de Janeiro. One of my works is to acknowledge through my work, our history, our Afro-Brazilian and indigenous history as well. And I know that February is Black History Month in the US. As October is Black History Month in Britain. Now I'd like to know from where you are and when is Black History Month in your country. So um, while you either research or remember, I will be um, sharing a little bit of my, uh, my work here and what I'm going to do today, OK? Our tour uh, is starting and it's going to last about 30 minutes. Nota, uh, thanks so much for bringing that up. Uh, no worries. And I think it's nice that you um, share your contributions because in, in our history, in the world history, there are many stories around uh, slavery from ancient times and modern times and, and holocausts and genocides. So in Greece, there is an, in the ancient times, a history around uh, the enslavement of, of other peoples who were uh, not considered citizens of Greece and therefore suffered a lot of different uh, prejudices or uh, enslavement as well. So this tour today is to acknowledge all of those people who were enslaved or forced to, to fight and um, participate on different wars that many times weren't even their wars. And today, the modern uh, shape of slavery is different. And uh, the capitalistic society created different um, garments, new garments for a system that is still allow most of the population to just have the right of food of not without quality, without health, without housing, without many human rights to be acknowledged and secured. So there are modern ways of slavery in the systems that we live right today. 
Today I will be walking around on what was one of the biggest slave markets in the world, where later I will visit in another tour, the UNESCO World Heritage Site for that memory as well. And we suffer these consequences nowadays. And to get rid of, of the, uh, the bad repercussions of 380 years of slavery, how many years more we will need to face and go through? It's a tour about pain, but also about the wealth and goods of the legacy left by these people who was spread by the diaspora. I saw that many other people joined and I would just say thank you so much for joining, for being here present and listening to some of our shared stories. I hope that most of the people who joined at first are still present here and that you keep up with me. I will be sharing uh, about 30 minutes of the history around in the city center of what was the biggest slave port and slave trade market in the world. A history uncovered, untold, uh, covered and untold uh, by still very untold by many Brazilians still nowadays in schools, in institutions, in institutions of power and culture. Therefore, the work and the play I role as an educator, as a tour guide, as being here with you, is to keep the legacy of acknowledging this history, sh uh, talking, denouncing about a genocide, a holocaust the biggest one in our modern slavery times. And I will be very happy and glad to uh, answer your questions. I can answer and talk about any topic you want. And I really, my style is to build up upon your interests so I can keep you engaged and interested on in what I'm saying instead of just myself speaking without knowing if I'm really fulfilling your uh, expectations, all right? So please let me know if the quality of the sound is good, if the audio uh, pixelates, uh, please point that out for me because it's important for me to follow that app, to, to understand that and find the best spots to broadcast and live stream for you. Thanks Michael, Mary and Tom for joining and being together. Thank you Wendy from Scotland, Essen and BP for being present. Nice Sue. Sound and picture fine right now, great. That's great then. Today we will visit the church behind us. And this is the church of Santa Rita Church. And I will let you know why I chose that for our Black History Month to celebrate the American Black History Month. Hi Ramona, thanks for joining. Please let me know for you who joined now, where are you speaking from? And when is Black History Month in your country? Because this tour now is, uh, I'm doing, hey Nalom, welcome. I'm doing to celebrate with other tour guides on Hego, such as Sayuri Koshima, our South Carolina. Mm, welcome, Anne. Very, very strong Black history culture there, in, uh, Black culture in South Carolina where the blues roots are very intricate. In this place where we are, close to the port area of Rio, uh, the black history culture and the history of samba is very present, of the black, uh, black magic women, what we call the women of Ashe. So later today, and I think about one hour and a half, or less than, than, less than that, in one hour about that, we will have the black history women and uh, black magic women tour led in another part of this area here, okay, where the Afro-Brazilian religions were created in Brazil, here and in uh, Salvador Bahia. Thanks, Anne, for joining. Ah, oh, Black History Month in Scotland and England is October. Thank you, Wendy, for uh, acknowledging that. And also, uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Thanks, Tom. Black History Month in the U.S. is February. And do you know when is Black History Month in Brazil? And why? I can keep that. Hello, Melanie from North Wales. Thanks for joining. Hi, Jennifer. So Black History Month in Brazil is in November. 
And there are some reasons around that. And I can answer that later if you bring that up. Uh, wow, there are many VLTs passing by. And the VLT, they cross the whole complex of the slave market that worked in this region here. Today, the tour is about historic churches. And I'm going to make it like a surprise church every time when I put that up. So the uh, since I focus on, on Hegel, I focus on Black history because I have other partners from Rio de Janeiro who are Dana, who will also lead tours today at the Tomorrow Museum here in the port area, and also Tachi Araujo, who makes different landmarks, highlights of Rio beaches, which I also make, but in order to collaborate with them in a very nice, colleagues-friendly uh, way, instead of competing, because I don't like to compete, I like to collaborate, I think we are stronger that way, and then I, I decided to focus in one of the uh, researches that I really like to do, acknowledging our Afro-Brazilian and indigenous roots. Thanks, Yordanka, for joining. So then the, I chose today the Church of Santa Rita, and behind me there is a pattern on the floor that I don't know if you have been able to really look and understand what I'm showing and sharing, but I'm going to talk about it soon. I'm going to switch the camera and give you an overview of where we are in Largo da, da Santa Rita. Oh, thank you so much. Locations in Rio de Janeiro. Yes, thank you. And when we enter the church, I'm going to wear my mask because here in Rio, uh, we, you, uh, wearing the mask outside is mandatory. It's, it's not mandatory anymore, but many people are wearing but some t people are not wearing, as you see around with the people passing by. But when we enter spaces, either than, of course, a restaurant or a bar where you, you are going to drink and eat, when you enter, you use the mask. But when you are sitting on your table, you are without the mask. But if you enter a museum or other institution, you need to be wearing your mask in indoor spaces. Yes, many tours today. Today is like a Brazilian day uh, tour focusing in the, in the port area of Rio where we are. And hi, Faith. Thanks for joining. And, um, and uh, I will be focusing on the Black History Month tour to celebrate with you guys the Black History Month of the U.S. Just remembering that the reparation needed to be done with the genocide and the Holocaust of African people throughout the times in history, uh, they need to be repaired and remembered not only on the Black History Months of your country, of my country, which happens uh, in different months, so that we have different reasons to celebrate Black History Month in the different months throughout the years, since each of our countries will carry a specific date when we celebrate, or a specific month when we celebrate these, hello, when we celebrate these dates. So that is the Church of Santa Rita, which I chose as the surprise historic church for today. And there is a reason for that. Do you know why I am in the Santa Rita Square and why I chose the Santa Rita Church to celebrate the Black History Month? To remember, there is a, also a, a kind of a, a hostel there for just for men, where they rent rooms and where they have a nice view from the square as well. One day I asked to go there to take a picture of the the square. Hi Joshua, thanks for joining. My name is Kelly Tavares, tour guide here in Rio de Janeiro. And on Hego, I focus on leading the Black History tours uh, in the platform. Uh, and then today I'm in Largo de Santa Rita, and I'm going to share now the floor pattern so you can see and let me know what is represented down here on this uh, floor, which was, which is made of the stones used in Portugal in the in Lisbon at the Rocio, Largo do Rocio, the Portuguese invented this mosaic technique of these stones 
to put on the sidewalks and make beautiful patterns with different symbols. Now, during colonial times here in Brazil, uh, they adopted these uh, same kind of pattern on the sidewalks, bringing uh, the Portuguese to make it and then teach these uh, hand uh, craft to the people here so we can do it here as well in different sidewalks of the historic center or Copacabana Beach or Ipanema beaches as well. Here, one pattern that, which is well known from the British, many black and British people all ar around the world is this pattern representing the black poppy. Do you know what the symbol of the black poppy represents for black history? In Britain and uh, in some of the, uh, the countries of the West Indies. So this black poppy was set here in this mosaic in order to dialogue with the black legacy history in Britain, which was an idea of a black and British woman called Selina Carty. And Selina Carty, uh, she decided in 2010 to find a symbol that could represent as the red poppies and other poppies represent the, war, the warriors, the soldiers who were sent to the Second World War to fight for Britain, to, for the British Empire, and who died there. So the black communities decided that more of the black history of the soldiers fighting on the war should be acknowledged as well. So uh, they created the black poppies to remember the efforts of all the population who came from the different colon uh, colonies of Britain, from the Caribbean, from the Pacific Islanders, and other black and British people who fought on the wars to the British Empire. Hi, Philip. Hi, Joshua. So then, uh, now in October, the black and British communities around the Brixton, the Brixton neighborhood in Britain, in London, they go and celebrate over in front of the memorial to the war, the Second World War, the contributions of black people who died and fought for Britain and who, unfortunately, with the scandal of the Windrush, if you don't know about that, please research because this history today is more about Brazilian black history. The Windrush scandal will reveal the injustice made with black and British people or with people who are from the West Indies generation. So why again was this black rose set up here on the square of the Santa Rita church? There is a reason. Any guess? Any questions? I'd like to build up over your questions, okay? Because that's a way to know if you are still there with me, if you are engaged with what I'm saying, if that's uh, it's also of your interest. Now let me see if I can get the the light. The light there is uh, behind the church, so I don't know. But you can get a postcard, despite of the light not being in our favor. But I'd like to share with you uh, my bag and a black poppy that I have, which I got in the Black History Archives by the time I was in Brixton, researching a lot of the black history and learning with black British people about black history there. So I participated in some of these celebrations because I'm a tour guide in Rio and the participation of many black people and col and colonizers around the globe is an, an intricate history which is part of one history together wind rush scandal was an absolute disgrace heartbreaking to read about yes and you can read about so you can help to protect the people who are fighting for their rights for better recognition in where they live.
So here, my bag, it brings the name of the different uh, places of black history in the port area, area where I lead tours. And today I will be in some of these places. Uh, it is a bag from the Institute of, uh, of New Blacks and tells the history of the lost, uh, not lost, but hidden cemetery that was found, uh, that was found in, the, in the 1996, the cemetery of the enslaved African people. And as you can see here, I do have a black poppy in my bag, which I bought to support also the cause and be present there in Brixton in the celebrations of the people, black people who fought and died in the wars. So this rose was for pride, to bring pride of to the black people history, to acknowledge it and to fight for the remembrance and for these stories to be told. So people like me, educators and politicians who fight for this right of these stories to be told are really important to keep carrying the story and to bring on ourselves what are the good things that we can take out of difficult moments as well, of diff difficult and, uh, and shame moments of our history. So what do we get? What can we get to make it and fix the mistake? What are the solutions? What are the ways that we can fight together to change this history and not keep perpetrating it? Now I'm going to show you around the neighborhood, around the Church of Santa Rita. And I will tell you then why I chose the Church of Santa Rita as the historic church for today. The Church of Santa Rita was built in the 1700s in Rio de Janeiro. And its architecture is typical from the 1700s church in Brazil that you find with European um, patterns of architectural patterns, but using the resources and materials which were present in Brazil on that time. Of course, also some of the materials were imported from Portugal, but most of them were used with the materials from the land. So it's a, from outside, usually these churches are, are more, uh, the uh, architecture are more like s simple, like uh, basic, I would say, and the tower of the, the bells are there on the top. And this one has one tower only. It's not very symmetric as, uh, with the influences of uh, Renaissance, the Renaissance churches and architecture from Italy, because sometimes the money wasn't enough to build a second tower on the right, on the both sides. But even though it's a be very beautiful church from the St. Rita Church, it was in located in this neighborhood where its wealth is, can be seen by different buildings, historic buildings on its surroundings. Of course, some of these buildings were built in the 1800s and 1900s, such as these in the corner, which was built after the Church of Santa Rita. Or that white one on the back of the church, which you see from the rooftop, a uh, French influence from the end of the 1800s and the beginning of the 20th century. Now, around the square where the black poppy is, where the other buildings are, you see other historic buildings among the modern buildings as well. Some fancy ones, which tells the story of a moment when this, everything that you see was part of a huge, the biggest complex of slave trade in the modern times, if not in all times, since the proportion of the demographics was different in the 1800s than in the ancient times. Now I'm gonna cross the street and uh, the one the very important thing related to this tour is that it's black history, it's black legacy, and uh, 
it's important to remember what is the solution. Uh, the, the, my internet signal is pointed out that it's dropping a little. And I don't know if it's pixelating there for you. And it's dropping because the, it's a monumental church and the walls are really thick. So it creates, uh, how can I say, uh, breaks on the, in the transmissions of the Wi-Fi signal. Okay, good. Maybe it can drop in a few minutes. Please let me know. Okay. Hi, Satan. Esabet, Deborah, Lina, and Louise for joining. Okay. Now I'm going to share a little bit of the details of these streets here around. If you look at the floor on the side of the church, and we think, hi, Jay, thanks for joining. The importance of this church in the history of the slave trade in Brazil. Around this area is very close to the sea. And here worked already, was functioning in the 1700s, a uh, permanent slave market and also the port area where the slave ships would arrive. So uh, people were being brought from Africa in the 15th square port and here in the UNESCO World Heritage Site for this memory in the Valongo Wharf and they were being brought here okay to be sold in the different markets located in many of these buildings which were of course in the 1700s different the architecture was more like I said more simple more practic uh, to to work as that business so I can show you some details of the walls closer here as well, and on the side of the church. And the church of Santa Rita is where many of the black people who hasn't really died on the crossing of the ocean, of the Atlantic Ocean, and they arrived here, they were treated in quarantine, and they were served food so they could be sold and distributed if I'm using the correct word, in the different houses here to uh, be treated and sold in the different slave markets. But the ones who died immediately after their arrival, they were the traders paid a small amount for them to be buried under this ground. Hi, Chris. Hi, Susan. Hi, Jay. So the streets you see around the church of Santa Rita, they actually have a lot of bones underneath it. Now I ask if there are many signs around pointed out to that in the surroundings. I can tell you, no, there aren't many. There is this sign here that talks about the fraternity of Santa Rita, the importance of this church from the 1700s and 1721, and the worshipping of Santa Rita by the Portuguese Manuel Nascentes Pinto and his wife, Dona Antonia Maria, which brought the image of Santa Rita from Portugal. They were the ones responsible for running and managing this church here in uh, the outskirts of what was in the surroundings part of their businesses as well. So people uh, had uh, have the... The, 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 the habit of burying their dead, and they had in the 1700s the habit of burying their dead around the church. Ah, I pensei a moça que Jesus disse que eu podia entrar. Ah, que pena. Ok. Então vou mostrar só de fora mesmo. Mas é mais para entrar. Aqui é a área pública. So uh, then the guy here is saying that I uh, I need an authorization to film inside, so I can only show you from the door. Okay, so you can have an idea of the patio on the side of the church. So as people had money to uh, finance the foundations of the Catholic churches, they could buy places where they could be uh, buried in the different grounds of the church. So the more power and more money people had, uh, like business people uh, connected with the slave trades around in the area, 
or business owners, colonizers, Portuguese, they could pay to bury to be buried inside of the church, and then they believed that they would be closer to God and to to the sky, to heaven, if they were buried inside of the church. But the enslaved Africans, they were uh, they were brought, kidnapped from different parts of Africa to be sold here in this market. But many of them died immediately after their arrival and they weren't really sold what and they were considered objects without a soul so after it is and this change this conception was changing throughout time in our history and uh, one thing that happened is after the 1700s there was the arrival of the royal family in Brazil in 1808. 15,000 people from the royal family arrived in Brazil with Dom Pedro, uh, with Dom Juan VI and Dona Maria I. And here, when they arrived in the colony in the 15th square, where the slave market was located and big flourishing in this, I don't like this word, but it was like prominent, generating all the wealth and richness of, of this, this country. The slave port was there in the 15th square. And with that said, the family, the royal family arriving there, the Portuguese family arriving there, when they got here, running away from Napoleon, they found a nation where there wasn't any institution of knowledge, any institution of science, any uh, infrastructure other than everything that could be built in the colony of exploitation, which was allowed only to be built manufacturers related to the plantation farms, to the sugar mills, and to the plantation farms of the sugar and other goods that were uh, planted and uh, produced in Brazil. Noticing that the slavery was a big factor of uh, underdevelopment of the Latin American countries, which were colonies of exploitation. Why? I'm going to share a little bit more of the church with you. Some details of the doors. So these details of the doors, they uh, will represent some of the ornates of the time when uh, these churches, which were simpler churches of like the Hokoko style. It's a French style that was already kind of, uh, it's from the 1700s and which was already late um, aesthetics when it was established here. And the Hokkaians are some of the ornates which were patterns very used in the in decorations of the interior of the church. So these are the Hokkaians and the whole kinds, they are, with these uh, symbols here, they symbolize like natural forms to nature, such as vegetable, uh, not vegetables, but plants or uh, shells, like seashells that could be used in the different parts of the, where you keep like the icons of the saints on the side of the church, such as where you see there. This flooring that you see around here was is a common flooring from the 1700s and 1800s as well. And they are tiles that are produced and pigmented uh, by the way when they are manufactured. It's an art and style on itself. Now, the benches that you see uh, they aren't they weren't used in the 1700s. People would come and not really have the benches. This was incorporated later. But anyways, the other time I came here and I asked the lady if I could enter the church, she said it was okay to enter. Now, uh, I came and the, the guy here at the door, he said that I won't be able to really enter because I need to get uh, permission. But it's a shame. I wish they had more uh, communication set up to help us out make our work. But you see, this is a, 
a column which is not a real column. In the in the Hokoka churches, in many of the churches, you see uh, some of the parts of the church. They sometimes are just to ornate the like the entrance, and they will have different influences of even older, uh, like Roman and Greek arches, false columns and pillars, mostly to ornate the, the architectures. Now the bell is ringing and Santa Rita is represented up there. I saw many people like Chris, Daphne, Dave and Susan who joined there and I'm noticing that you were kind of quiet and I'd like to know from you uh, if you have any questions so far. How am I going? And uh, I will pre present myself again. I'm Kelly Tavares, tour guide in Rio de Janeiro. Please follow me uh, at rioencantos.com. And please let me know uh, when you follow me on Instagram, Rio Encantos, R-I-E, R-I-O, E N C A N T O S, Rio Encantos. You can also find these links to my blog, to my research, and to social media on the links on my profile on Hego. So please search for that to get to know more and send me a message on Instagram, please, or in other on Facebook or YouTube. Tell me, uh, telling me when is Black History Month in your country? So we can always celebrate and acknowledge that. Uh, one thing that is really, really important, thank you so much, Wendy, uh, is that if you can support me, for those of you who are new or who are already initiated in the, in the Hego, I say that's really important for me to be here. I spend like money to come and, and I will soon, I will give another tour and I also will have lunch here and I will lead a, a, another walking tour in the afternoon. And for me, it's very important to have your support, to help me buy my lunch, to help me travel throughout uh, Brazil to learn more and connect with other guides, to learn more of, of Afro-Brazilian uh, culture and black history. And one thing that I really want to do, I've, I've been to... Uh, Lisbon and took uh, Black History tours. Thank you, Nota. Thank you so much. Uh, I took this tour with Naki in Lisbon, where he was telling the untold stories of the Portuguese, of Black people there in Lisbon, in Portugal. He plays an important role there. Kelly Foster in Brixton, Britain. Uh, Black History Studies in London. So I've been connecting with these guides throughout the world and in Africa as well with Carlos Bumba in Angola and, um, and other guides. And it's very, very important. Rio Encantos, R-I-O-E-N-C-A-N-T-O-S. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Noda Athens for, uh, from Athens for supporting my work. Uh, I, I'm finishing the tour now. And one thing that I've been noticing, uh, throughout these times in Hegel is that people in general are not supporting the guides much. And what I think is really uh, sad from my part, because we take some risks on the streets with our equipment. We take our time, it's work. Thank you so much, Luigi, thank you. And you know, if I go to my dentist, now I need to go to my dentist, and I say, may I tip you? My dentist one tip won't accept that you know and I, why i say that it's kind of a climb because i'm helping to educate you as my community my virtual community to support me telling these stories because it's uh, these are years years and years of passion research and i don't keep the money just to myself i really invest on getting together with other black history guides and paying for their, their work as well and a very important movement among us is it's part of the reparation when we start to bring people to unite and to acknowledge each other's works by also helping them to pay their bills or to finance their researches. 
finance the trips that will help them to do their field works. So it's my goal also, not only to make money, but to teach you that, that there were hundreds of years, if not thousands of years of not paying for black people's work. So my duty is to teach you that here's an opportunity for you to support me and many other guides from South America who are from indigenous heritage, who are from black heritage, that we need your support. And I hear from many friends that it's really sometimes it's not really nice when we get make this effort and we uh, spend money to work. So I hope I can touch your heart and teach you a little bit of our, our pain as well, which is not only of my pain, but a lot of my people who are around as well, fighting every day to have and see their works really valued and valued in a way that is not only saying thank you, which is really, really important, which is not only saying that they are amazing, which is crucial, but what is like helping them to grow as professionals, to grow as people, to have dignity in their lives. So I hope I can touch your hearts because here I give my heart. Thank you so much. I'm leaving now. Thank you, Satan. Thank you, Anne, for your support. Thank you, all of you who were present. Your voices, your reviews, and your words are really important. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you soon and later at Black, uh, Black Magic Woman Tour in a few minutes. Bye-bye.